Hi folks, welcome to this video on sports injuries. So this is going to be one of a series of videos I'm going to uh, produce on the sports injuries topics. The first one is just going to look very basically at types and classifications of different kinds of sports injuries. So this slide just begins with a couple of very basic definitions. We've got uh, acute injuries here and chronic injuries here. Acute injuries uh, occur uh, as a result of an incident during an event, match or game. The other phrase we like to use is it's an immediate onset. So what we mean by that is if I was to say to you, when did this injury take place? You could tell me exactly when, oh, I fell over or this player impacted on me or I had a collision with this player. You can tell me exactly when that injury took place. In contrast to that with a chronic injury, uh, these injuries come on over a period of time. So it's that classic response where people say, oh, it hasn't felt right for a while. Uh, it's gradually been getting worse, but they can't tell you exactly when the injury started. It's you, or nearly always as a result of repetitive or continuous use or strain on a particular part of the body. Now we can categorize injuries as being acute or chronic. We can also categorize them as being hard tissue or soft tissue, as you'd expect. Hard tissue injuries are injuries to the bones, the joints, but also the cartilage. Even though cartilage is quite springy, it's classified as a hard tissue. So, for example, here you've got someone who's fractured their clavicle, their collarbone. This would be an acute hard tissue injury because obviously that's happened with an immediate impact uh, or a collision. And it's, a, it's an injury that's cared to a bone. Whereas a soft tissue injury are injuries to ligaments, tendons, muscles, things like that. And again, these can be acute or they can be chronic. Fractures can be chronic as well. We're going to look at all these different category, uh, categories of injuries and hopefully give you a few examples. So we've got acute and chronic, and then we've got hard tissue and soft tissue. So what we're going to look at now are some different kinds of fractures that you might get. So a fracture, uh, you know, people say, is the difference between a fracture and a break? There isn't. They're, they're, they're the same thing. A, fra a bone fracture, break or crack occurs in part or all of the bone. So image here, someone has broken their tibia and fibula, quite a nasty injury. Now fractures can be simple fractures, so the bone breaks but the skin remains unbroken. That is what's happened here, you've got a uh, break to the tibia, but it hasn't come through the skin. Whereas a compound fracture, also known as an open fracture, is where the bone breaks. So again, it's injured to the tibia. But this time the bone has come through the skin and the big extra increase of risk here is the risk of infection. Now here are another couple of types of fractures. This one, you've either heard of it or you haven't, it's called a green stick fracture. Okay, now what you can see here is the bone or the bones, the tibia and the fibula bent and then as they've bent one of them has broken a little bit here. Now they call it a green stick fracture because it's like a green a stick that's come off a tree so it's only just recently broken off a tree. If you bend uh, a twig that's fallen off a tree, it will bend a little bit and then it will ultimately break. And that's where this fracture, fracture gets its name from. The bone is bent and then it's broken. Now, the common in children, because um, uh, the bones in children's limbs particularly are, quil are still quite pliable. They, they can bend a little bit. And that's why you often see green stick fractures in children because the bones bend a little bit, then they ultimately break. Unrelated to that, you've then got something called a comminuted fracture, and this is effectively where the bone shatters. So again, you can see the tibia here. The bone is shattered into at least three or more different places, usually caused by quite a heavy impact or a collision. So all those fractures would be hard tissue acute injuries. Other hard tissue acute injuries are dislocations um, caused by sudden impact forces on the bones. And the bones don't break, they separate. So what you've got here is you've got the elbow joint. So here's the humerus and the radius and the ulna are down here. Now that area of the bone there should be in that notch there. So what's happened is there's been a massive impact to the elbow and the elbow joint is dislocated. Um, any kind of dislocation, particularly in the shoulder, around the hip and things like that, there's obvious deformity. It looks odd, it looks different. It doesn't look like it should do straight away. If you do a comparison, look at the dislocated joint again, you know, for example, look at the dislocated shoulder versus the other shoulder, you'll tell there's a difference straight away. There's also lots of pain, unable to move it, and there's lots of swelling associated with the dislocation. So let's come away from hard tissue injuries now. Let's look at some soft tissue injuries that are again 
uh, acute injuries, immediate onset injuries. So contusion is a very, very technical posh name for a bruise. So I, I think everyone will say that they've had a contusion injury at some point. Maybe they've probably already got one now. Uh, blood vessels effectively tear. Now, don't start worrying about this. Yes, blood vessels have torn beneath the skin surface, but you are not internally bleeding. You're not bleeding out and bleeding to death. What we're talking about here is if you look at that kind of bruise there, you know, you've had it. Maybe it looks to me like someone's been hit with something there. Might be a cricket ball, a rounders ball, something like that. And it's bare some of the capillaries just underneath the skin surface. They've spilt their blood out and it leads to this purple and red and browny discoloration just under the skin surface. So usually caused by an impact, collision or a fall. A hematoma is where a contusion goes a little bit further. It's heavy bruising caused by, and there's more damage to the blood vessels now. It's slightly ruptured. But again, don't start worrying about this. You're not going to bleed out or anything like that. If you've had a dead leg or a dead arm in any sports that you've played before, you've had a hematoma. You've had a direct impact to the area. Um, the blood vessels have ruptured slightly and the blood has spilled out. And it leads to a lots of localised bleeding and swelling in the area. Very uncomfortable. Uh, it needs to be broken down. You need to get some mobility back and perform you, but you've got to take the right amount of time out. But the hematoma, you know, these are not career-ended injuries or anything like that. You manage them well and they go away. Now, two injuries that are often confused with each other because they sound very similar, sprains and strains. So, sprain is a tear to a ligament. Okay, remember, ligaments hold bones to bones. So, when you've had a sprain, you have damaged the ligament, something that's holding one bone to another. So, if this is an ankle sprain here, yeah, usually the case, what you've done is you've damaged the ligament that holds the fibula to the talus, the talus bone, something like that. And that's what causes the ankle sprain. Whereas a strain is where you damage the tendon and all the muscle tissues. So remember, tendons hold muscles to bones. And the way that you remember it is that you've got a T in strain and the T is to remind you that it's a tendon injury or a muscle tissue injury. So that's an easy way to remember it. Okay. Now, with these injuries, they can be categorised often as grade one, grade two and grade three. Grade one is where you've damaged 5% of the tissue. So again, you know, grade one sprains and strains are that uh, worrying. You know, you'll be back on your feet within two or three weeks. You'll be absolutely fine. Grade two is very ambiguous. Grade two is five to 95% of the tissue has gone through. So you can have quite a mild grade two, or you can have a very, very severe grade two. And a grade three is when you've had a total rupture. Effectively, you've gone all the way through the ligament or the tendon. Now, here are two of probably the most common uh, soft tissue acute injuries uh, that people suffer from regularly. Abrasions, you know, it's effectively a graze. Uh, so scraping of the skin on a surface. So anyone who's, you know, fallen down and, and landed on the knees, you've, you've no doubt had an abrasion or on your elbows as well. Um, because the skin is open and exposed, there's also risk of infection with this one. If you have a really, really serious abrasion, as it says here, it could require quite stitches but they it'd have to be quite severe uh, for it to warrant that blisters as well they are an injury don't forget it's when you've got friction because you've got i think it's about 11 different layers of skin i think we have uh, i may be wrong in that but when you've got friction occurring between the different layers of skin some of the skin can start to separate uh from, from its other layers and fluid can then build up between the layers of skin and it's very often caused by incorrect footwear uh, never ever pop a blister. That layer of fluid is there to protect the raw skin underneath. If you pop it, you expose it. Now, concussion is a much more serious injury than the two we've just looked at. Uh, but again, it's acute. And again, it's soft tissue because the damage isn't to the skull, the damage is to the brain on the inside of the skull. So, you know, you prime example is boxing. Anyone who's had a blow to the head, there's a risk that you could be suffering from concussion. The trauma to the brain, often with a direct blow to the head, symptoms of things like memory loss, headaches, dizziness, drowsiness, appearing vacant, not altogether there. Very, very big on the agenda in terms of, you know, a lot of sports now have head protocols where they're trying to manage uh, and look at and quickly diagnose whether concussion has actually taken place because it is a very, very serious injury so let's look at some chronic injuries now 
<clears throat> so remember, chronic injuries, they're the ones that have come on over long periods of time. There isn't an immediate onset. This is more of a delayed onset. Um, they're often referred to as overuse injuries, as you'd expect, and caused by repetitive strain, and they develop slowly over time. Now, I did say right at the start that, you know, fractures, you know, usually acute injuries, that's absolutely the case. But a stress fracture is a classic example of a hard tissue chronic injury. Now, what happens is that fracture there hasn't occurred through one act of trauma, one collision, something like that. It's repetitive strain. Think about, let's say, fast bowler in cricket. So someone's running in at 25 miles an hour, jumping into the air, slamming that leg down onto the ground in order to start their bowling action. How many tens of thousands of times would he or she have done that in their career? So the strain going through that tibia for 10,000 bowls eventually starts to cause cracks in the tibia. And that would be a classic example of a tibial stress fracture caused by that repetitive strain. Shin splints is another example uh, of a chronic injury. So the mistake people make is to think it's actual damage to the tibia itself. Any, any of you have had shin splints before, you'll know it's really sharp pain right at the front of your tibia, your shin bone, but it's actually overuse of your tibialis anterior. So the tibialis anterior, if I just try and find the better colored pen, what I was about to use there. Your tibialis anterior runs, is the muscle that runs up and down the front of your tibia there. It's the muscle that causes dorsiflexion. So when you contract it, it pulls the toes back towards uh, the tibia itself. And basically what shin splints is, is where you've done lots of long distance running. Maybe you've started running on hard surfaces. Maybe you've got bad technique. Maybe your footwear isn't adequate. And it's causing a lot of strain on this tibialis anterior. And that's what gives you the pain running on the front of your tibia. Now, the, the treatment is lots of rest, lots of ice to numb the pain. And you can use medication like paracetamol and ibuprofen to try and take the sting out of it a little bit. Now, a tendinosis is where you've got long-term damage to a tendon uh, in the body. If you ever had tendonitis, itis is in, well, every time you read the word itis, it means inflammation of. Now, they're usually caused by in more short-term situations, whereas tendinosis is you've caused that much damage to the tendon, it's actually quite a long-term thing and it's going to take a lot of time to recover from. It's, it's, it's repetitive strain, again, it's overuse. You get Achilles tendinosis, which is what this diagram is representing. So you get pain in the Achilles tendon up the back of the lower leg. That's common in runners. Again, poor footwear, sudden increases in training volume, uh, run on hard surfaces, things like that. For anyone who's heard of or had golfers or tennis elbow, that's tendinosis as well. And that's repetitive strain on the uh, tendons in the forearm. So anyone who's had them before, they're on either side of the, uh, the tendons on either side of the elbow joint, just below the elbow joint. That is a prime example of tendinosis in the upper body. Again, they're all caused by overuse of the associated tendon, lots of repetitive strain. And again, keep banging this drum. The treatment is lots of rest. Remember, these injuries take a long time to come on. There's only long periods of rest that are going to get rid of these injuries. So there we are, all the main categories and classifications of injuries with examples. Questions that you're likely to get on the exam that we've seen in the past are things like, can you identify two hard um, chronic, hard tissue chronic injuries, you know, that kind of thing. So you need to be able to draw on a couple of examples of each hard tissue, soft tissue, chronic acute. So please make sure you can categorise all the injuries that we've gone through under those titles. All right. I hope you found this uh, video useful, folks.